In July of 1969, Mann landed on the moon for the first time. Two months later, Abbey Road, the last album the Beatles recorded together, was released. And college football celebrated its 100th year in 1969, a fact that was celebrated on postage stamps and a billboard alongside 231 in Greencastle, the road that connects the two colleges. Game day programs even had a message from the president. The Indianapolis Star saw Wabash as the favorite that fall. It noted that Mike Henry was running wild, gaining 1,235 yards as the state's leading rusher. The paper pointed out that DePaul had beaten St. Joseph's, a team Wabash lost to, but the Little Giants had beaten Ohio Wesleyan, Wheaton, and Butler, teams that all trounced DePaul. Here's a pregame shot of Blackstock Stadium. Conditions would have been better for a cross-country ski outing. You'll notice as the camera pans that the scoreboard is on, yet there's no activity in the parking lot. It was later described as a shivering crowd of 2,000. The Little Giants struck first, Henry with a one-yard plunge. With 6.30 left in the first quarter, he had 144 yards on the day on 43 carries. The home team got on the scoreboard when DePaul's Jim Posiak hit a 28-yard field goal with 11.43 left to go in the first half. It was now 7-3. In the third quarter, a big play for the home team. DePaul senior quarterback Ron McBride connects with Scott Ralston on a 39-yard strike, setting up a two-yard touchdown run six plays later by sophomore Doug Maple. DePaul was up 10-7. In the fourth quarter, with Wabash threatening, Mark Dinwiddie intercepts a little giant pass at the goal line. And with 91 seconds left in the game, McBride, playing in his last college contest, scampered 13 yards right up the middle for the TD that iced it. It was two straight bell wins for DePauw, and the quarterback was named the game's MVP.